You're watching Taste the Victory. So, a couple of days ago, I posted gameplay versus the incredibly hyped Dr. Pepper Titamon deck featuring Royal Knights, so here is a profile for it. You can click in the top right to see that gameplay video, but one quick note, there is some changes in this deck uh, from that gameplay video after some more testing, including that video itself. So let's go ahead and get to that in this video with a breaking down of Black Royal Knights. So Black Royal Knights is introduced in this uh, set, which is set six, because of the new Genkumon. He is a Royal Knight. I did not know of him before Cyber Sleuth. He is four to Digivolve into, 12,000 DP, 12 to Hardcast. When Digivolving, delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the lower, lowest play cost. So the way this works is, yeah, everything with the lowest play cost will be deleted. And if you only have one Digimon on the field, that is technically the lowest play cost. So if they only have like a BL Starmon out, this will delete that. Or if they have two BL Stars Mon, they'll both get deleted. And that's really cool. Really powerful removal effect for on deletion. Your turn, while your opponent has no unsuspended Digimon, this Digimon gains security. Oh no, while this Digimon, while your opponent has an unsuspended Digimon, this Digimon gains security attack plus one. So the reason Genkumon fits so well into black is because of all the other blockers you have building up a wall. So a lot of opponents may not choose to swing uh, playing into that security attack plus one, which is really strong with it. It is unfortunately four cost of Digivolve into, which is always rough to see on a card because it makes it a lot harder to uh, go into without passing turn, making it a lot less desirable. But black as a color is a lot slower in general compared to the rest of the game. So it doesn't affect the speed of black too much typically. It kind of feels at home in this color. So let's go ahead and start from the bottom and work our way up. Let's turn on stats for you guys so you can see what is how much of everything. First are five eggs. And I really do recommend five eggs in this format because security control is going to be popular. Uh, Lilith loop is going to be popular. These decks all have an incredible grind game and you want to be able to have that fifth draw to keep up with them. Uh, Pagumon is a level two on deletion. Reveal the top card of your deck. Add it to your hand if it's a black Digimon card. Otherwise, place it at the bottom of your deck. So black is a pretty slow color. It's not traditionally have a lot of great draw power. A lot of its other eggs aren't that great either. They're pretty situational DP boosts that um, aren't that optimal. So we're gonna max out the Pagu to at least hopefully get draws when deleted to make a bad situation a little bit better when one of your Digimon gets deleted. Our last egg is Kapurimon, your turn. While this Digimon has blocker, this Digimon gains plus 1000 DP. So a lot of this deck is blocker. So um, if you wanna be aggressive with your blockers on your turn, this helps you with that. You'll be a little more aggressive, swing safely into security. It is important to know, please keep in mind, uh, this is a your turn effect, so this will not help you block your opponent's Digimon, ironically enough. They definitely made this card to be more aggressive. And for some fun lore, pairing these two together as eggs, uh, look at the background of Pagumon's art. He ate the Kapurimon! Look at the background! Look at the bones! That's messed up, man. <laughs> Next up, we move to our rookies, of which we're running 14. A nice, good number to be able to draw that in opening hand and get that draw. First up, we have Toy Agumon, which has reboots, which is in the opponent's active phase. The opponent's active phase. This Digimon becomes uh, unsuspended. So Toy Agumon is amazing for that because uh, at the rookie level, being able to turn anything um, into a rebooting Digimon is really powerful because it lets you swing early without fear of being swung back at. And that is an amazing um, early aggression that Toy Agumon can provide, which is why we definitely want to max that out. Uh, we have some of our Megas that do have reboot naturally, but you just prioritize going into a different Mega. Next up, we got Chumon. It is three to play, zero Digimon into 1000 DP, so it's pretty easy to pop. And it is both players' turns. Your opponent cannot gain memory except by the effect of Tamer cards. So Chumon is great in this meta because you have stuff running around like Hammer Spark. Uh, soon enough we will have the booster sets, uh, the starter decks introduced which have the memory boost that blocks those. Uh, this blocks any uh, uh, blinding ray shenanigans from yellow. So I, in a color that's a lot slower like black, I like running three of it to make sure we see it and get it out there. A lot of other colors you will see it run at two but I think black uh, has a space for three. Next up, we got Chikurimon. So Chikurimon is like Huang Zero's favorite Digimon. He talks about it constantly in his server on his streams, but for good reason. This card's amazing. It's only three to hard cast, zero Digivolve into, 1000 DP, but it's a security Digimon, which we don't have too many of right now. And it's an amazing one. Security, at the end of battle, trigger D Digivolve one on one of your opponent's Digimon. So if your opponent has just one on first swing, this D Digivolves it, next swing, maybe it'll die to some, um, big guy in your security because now it's a savior Huckamon or something like that. Chikurimon can be devastating at the right time in security, so it's really great. Max it out to make sure we see more of those, uh, hopefully in security rather than in your hand. Uh, I love this card. It has a lot of utility, and because it's just a rookie, you have no problem saving your hand and just going into it for the free draw off your Digitama. 
Next up, we have starter deck blocker Agumon. Pretty simple, he's just a 1000 DP blocker. If you're playing against anything other than maybe yellow, uh, than yellow and possibly red, they will be able to stick on the field because they won't have too much DP minusing to get rid of it. And they will have to swing over this. This is not gonna leave any checks, but what it does do is protect your security. And at, uh, with Ty that we have in this deck, you'll at least be 2000 DP on your turn. So you may trade with some rookies even. Uh, yes, you could also run the Son of, Son of Riza promo. Because that is also fantastic in this deck with our big uh, Mega Digimon. What Senorisa does is all your Black Digimon with 13,000 DP or more gain piercing, uh, which we can uh, hit more comfortably if we adjust our um, champion lineup. But uh, since the top end is already kind of pricey after buyouts, unfortunately, with BT6 hype, I kind of want to keep this a little more cost down. So you could definitely run Agumon as a nice substitute in its place since this is a blocker focused deck. But if you have the Senorisa or you have access to them, definitely go ahead and substitute that for through Senorisa. That is our rookie lineup. We'll move on to our 11 champions. Typically, I like to run 12, but we do have to make space for uh, tamers and options in this deck because Black has gotten some pretty good options now as a booster set 6. We have Tanktramon, self-explanatory. He is only one to digivolve into despite being a champion, so being able to turbo up fast like that is great with 6,000 DP. Next, we got uh, Sealstramon. It is a blocker, two to digivolve into, and 6,000 DP. We run this blocker in addition to the one cost blocker because that 6,000 DP is huge. It lets us miss some DP removal um, breakpoints from yellow and it also lets us um, trade with other people's uh, vanilla Digimon after swinging with those because those are typically at like 5,000 DP at the champion level so we get to live over them instead of trade my bad and next up we got a tech one of Mechanorimon it is only four to hardcast so you will be hardcasting it as a champion pretty often 6,000 DP is fantastic for the reasons we just explained with Sealstromon it is three to Digivolve into, it has blocker, it can't attack unfortunately, but it does have opponent's turn when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle and survives unsuspended. So I guess Rookie Rush, if they don't have, uh, say, that yellow option, um, the Crusader Mon yellow option, the name is like eluding me right now, but it blows up Digimon pretty easily for every body they have on board. If they don't have that option or some other way to get rid of Mechanorimon, they can't swing. Because if they swing, you're just gonna restand every time and clear out their entire board by playing into um, them playing into you. So Mechanorimon is a great hard counter like that if they don't see the out. Um, even for uh, something like Agubon, uh, Agubon, yeah, the, the Agubon and also the Gabumon, Bond of Friendship, both of those decks, uh, they kind of play like a base Rookie Rush package in addition to the Gabumon. So if they're not seeing their uh, Gabumon Bond of Friendship fast enough, Mechanorimon becomes a real pain in the side. After that, we got Dark Tyranomon 1 to Digivolve into, which is fantastic and lets us Digivolve quickly at the champion level, but at the cost of being 5,000 DP. Still, he's a blocker that's only 1 to Digivolve into. Uh, we really want it more for that 1 cost of evolution to go up quick, so it's a fantastic card for that. Then we got Gagumon. 8 to play, 3 to evolve into, 7,000 DP, and then main it has Digiburst 1, which means you only have to discard one card from this um, Digimon sources. And once you do that, you get one of your Digimon gets plus 2,000 DP until the end of your opponent's next turn. So keep in mind that is until the end of your next turn. So if you go into like Craniumon after this, you can get a huge blocker that um, even, what do you call it, Jessmon wouldn't be able to swing over. Uh, it is Digi Burst 1, which means it, you can use it as many times as you have sources, so you can get a pretty huge, like up to 20,000 DP, I think. Uh, off of uh, off of say Craniumon. Next, it's inheritable. Is all this Digimon gets plus one thousand DP. So as Sunarisa said, it is a uh, thirteen thousand DP or more Digimon get piercing. So this easily helps boost Craniumon into that range. So if you want to run that, that's a, another good reason to run Gagumon. But we're mainly running it for that Digiburst effect, which is amazing. But that plus one thousand DP does come up quite handy when you're blocking. And next up, we got Gigadramon. It is three to evolve into from either red or black. You can play it hard casted for six, or you, and it has seven thousand DP. Your turn. The Digimon is also treated as red. So you know if you want to get funky with some um, text like um, a delicate plan or a Gaia Force, th this could work for that. And that's really amazing. But the main reason we're running it is for it's inheritable. This Digimon gets plus 2,000 DP. That is a really big number and quickly puts you at a high value for your blockers at the mega level to become a real side in your uh, pain in your opponent's side. After that, we got Rebellion So Rebellion is definitely a tech in this deck. You're typically going to see uh, Waru Manzeamon in this slot, which is definitely great because uh, similar to the one cost champions, this card is amazing for being a two cost ultimate, which is level five, which lets you go quickly up into your mega level. So there's definitely merit to be able to play around with these uh, ratios of our ultimates currently and run Waru Manzeamon instead. But to get more hate in the Jessmon matchup, I really like Rebellion When did you evolve it? You may trash one card in your hand to have this Digimon gain blocker and retaliation. 
and that is until the end of your opponent's next turn, so your uh, opponent's just mine can't swing into this or risk getting deleted by a puny little ultimate, and that's hilarious. You can digivolve over a purple um, level 4 or a black one, so it goes into this deck just fine. And in all turns, this card is also treated as black, so on your turn, your, your Digimon at the mega level can still digivolve over this guy, which is the problem usually when you try to run a multicolor deck. Sometimes there's like a roadblock and you can't keep digivolving up any higher, but because it's treated as black, that doesn't come in, that doesn't cut into your ratios and you can still go into your mega level Digimon. First off, we got Craniumon. There's been a lot of hype for this card to the point where people tried to buy it out on TCG Player and that really sucks. This card was $1. <laughs> Chill out at one point. Chill out. This card was $1. Uh, Craniumon is um, 13 to hard cast, so that's a little unfortunate because like if you were if this thing was like 11, it'd be amazing to be able to hard cast it in certain matchups. But it is 13, it is 12,000 DP, it is 4 to digivolve into, so we do have a lot of high cost megas unfortunately in this deck. But because of the slow nature of uh, black, because of the defensive nature of black, I don't feel it hinders it too badly as it did in previous metas. It has blocker and then it also has all uh, both players turns. All of your Digimon with Blocker cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, so this is amazing. You cannot be Gaia Forced. Uh, you cannot be deleted by most of all of, um, of Black's, or not Black, of uh, Purple's options. And this becomes really hard to remove and you have to do it through battle. Some colors will straight up just not be able to get to the DP threshold that Black is able to put out to be able to swing over Craniumon. I think only really Red can hit those numbers consistently. So Craniumon becomes an amazing blocker that sticks on the field forever and becomes such a panic for your opponent or, or else you're going to start chipping away at them and get rid of their board because you're just blocking over all their things with your giant numbers that you can get to in Black uh, between Gagamon, between champion lineup that you can play with. And I will bring that up right now. Clockmon is a mega, uh, a champion level four that you could tech in if you want bigger numbers. Opponent's turn, this Digimon gets plus 1000 DP, and that is at the uh, champion level. So you could like maybe cut one of your, uh, some of your Seal Stramons, Mechanori, maybe even cut into your uh, level, into your one cost evolution champions if you want. And that helps you reach even bigger numbers with your megas for your blockers. Next up, we got Pyle Volkmon. So this is yet again another tech to hate on Jessmon. It is 11,000 DP, uh, yeah, 11,000 DP, 11 to play, and 3 to digivolve into. It has reboot, which means it unsuspends itself during your opponent's unsuspend phase, and then opponent's turn, once returned, when one of your other Digimon is deleted, trigger D digivolve 1 on one of your opponent's Digimon. So this is awesome, because like Red has that uh, champion, I believe it's Balhuckmon, it'll delete stuff 5,000 DP or less, I want to say. And some people get really creative with the effects um, and run Rise Greymon, the red one that uh, the red yellow one that lets you minus something else by 2000 DP if you have a tamer, meaning you can even pop 7000 DP or less Digimon with Bao Hakuman. But if you do that, you're gonna risk losing your Chessmon with Pile of Pokemon out on the field, and then the reboot forces your opponent to have to have Judgment of the Blades to be able to take care of this thing. Uh, either way, it really puts your Chessmons uh, in a rock in a hard place. Uh, and plenty of other decks as well too, because that ability to um, uh, do you evolve on your other decks destruction? So Pyle Hawkmon is a very nice tech, but this is definitely a slot that you could play with. Alphamon definitely has um, a warranty in this deck because it synergizes with the other uh, Royal Knights in this deck for its effect to uh, stop uh, opponents from attacking. You can also get a uh, cool effects off the memory gain and plus 1000 DP, which plays into the DP inheritable to this deck. So Alphamon is definitely another tech that you can consider in Pyle Bulkmon slot. And it really comes down to what your local meta is or what you're expecting at regionals, because uh, I'm expecting a lot of Jessmon with how popular security control is gonna be and Jessmon having a good matchup into it by having access to a delicate plan. After that, we already went over Genkumon, and now we go to our um, level sevens. So Millennium on hype fell off hard. This card used to be like $36, and I think it's like $8 right now. I don't know if it got hype bought out again, but there is no hype for it. It's 15 to play, it's 13,000 DP. It can digivolve from a level six uh, of either purple or black for six. And then when did you evolve from channel one of your opponents, Digimon to the bottom of the deck? That Digimon's Digivolution sources are discarded. And then when, and then when destroyed, if this Digimon has Digivolution sources, you may play this Millennium on card from the trash without paying its cost. So the reason we're running this at two is for its first effect, that ability to non-destruction, non-targeting removal, anything on the field to the bottom of the deck, which is a lot harder to recover than to the trash, which some colors at least have ways to recover from. Millennium on is the closest we get to permanently removing something from this game at, at this moment, as there's no shuffling in the Digimon TCG. Once you hit the bottom of the deck, it's kind of just stuck there right now, as of this booster set six deck profile. So 
Millennium on is great removal if they're already struggling to get through your um, blockers. If they're trying to play safe and, and just not swing into them, you now get to get rid of them with Millennium on. Um, it's another great removal option. And then being able to uh, revive itself off the structure and if it has sources is really good in a security control heavy meta. This forces your opponents to swing into it twice with Jessmon, which they uh, will waste not swinging into security. I think it's really good meta call for this environment. But we do also have the um, Ultramon, Omnimon, Ultra S, and we could definitely swap these ratios depending on what you're expecting. I think either is perfectly fine. Ultra S is when Digivolve, all of your opponents Digimon, uh, Digivolve minus one, and then destroy all of your opponents Digimon with 5,000 DP or less. And then when attacking, you can return a level six in its Digimon sources to make it unblockable. So that is cool to make sure you can finish for game, even if they have a blocker out, and being able to control their entire board by Digivolving everything by one is devastating. However, in a meta where we have um, a lot of Digiversters, purple's gonna be Digiversting a lot, a lot of Warpers, um, red and blue, both of their main decks are gonna be warping, you know, between the bonds. So this deck, uh, its usefulness um, goes down a bit because the bonds aren't going to be sticking on field, you know? Um, so you're not gonna be dig digivolving a lot. So if they only have like a rookie out or something, it kind of feels bad to go into it. So you wanna hold it and you're gonna be holding it for a long time without really ever going into it, I've noticed most of the time. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely devastating in the right hands because if they do go wide, when they try to go wide around your blockers, this will completely clear them. So that is definitely uh, has merit to it. It's definitely not a bad card by any means and Alter S is being slept on. You definitely gotta be careful and keep this in mind when going wide against the blockers in black. It's a fantastic card. Next up, we got Breath of the Gods. Uh, two to play, main, one of your Digimon gets reboot and this Digimon can't have his DP uh, reduced or be returned to its owner's hand um, until the end of your opponent's next turn. So if you play this with Craniumon, this that card becomes indestructible, like completely, completely indestructible for one turn, basically. All you've gotta be able to do is beat over it, which a lot of colors can't do uh, too easily outside of red. So Breath of the Gods is amazing for applying that pressure, and even if you're playing it against, uh, or rather if you're using it on one of your other Megas, it's still huge. Like you, like you, you could like swing into um, security, play this, and make um, uh, uh, make it a little harder for them to get rid of it if they can't beat over something. So Breath of the Gods is amazing, but also a security effect is really good. Your opponent's Digimon can't attack players for the turn. So if this is like the first swing that they check, that feels awful. You wasted an entire Warp Digivolution in Goblin Bond, you know? Uh, you uh, wasted your uh, Savior Huckmon. Well, not Savior Huck, not, not Savior Huckmon. Uh, your Jessmon can swing next turn, but now you gotta wait. And that could be the turn that is a difference between winning or losing. So Breath of the Gods is really great for its security effect. After that, we got the new option introduced, Iron Fisted Onslaught. Main, uh, delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the highest play cost. So it's kind of the opposite of Gankumon's effect. It is eight to play. It's kind of like Black Sky Force. And it's really cool because it could be more devastating than Sky Force for the same cost if they have multiple Digimon with the same play cost out. So a lot of decks aren't geared towards playing against this. You know, you need to run different play cost Digimon to be able to, to counter this. Um, so like you could run a two cost vanilla rookie uh, you could run a regular rookie uh, that is now three cost. You know, you gotta do stuff like that, but a lot of people aren't keeping that in mind when deck building or when even playing. So they play into, into Iron Fisted Onslaught a lot and it becomes devastating against Rookie Rush matchups. And then Security Effect activates the main effect, so it's like, I of course, it's a really great option to um, compound with your uh, Jessmon to just clear everything on board if you're able to. And by Jessmon, I meant Gankumon. <laughs> Finally, to round out our list, we got Tai Kamiya. He is from all the way back in 1.0. Start of your turn, if your memory is two or less, becomes three, and an opponent's turn, all of your blockers get plus 1,000 DP, and a security effect lets you play it for free. Uh, we want that four cost, or rather, we want the memory setting to three effect to be able to make big plays, because a lot of our megas are at the four cost, you know, so we definitely want at least three guaranteed every turn. And then plus 1,000 DP is amazing, because this puts your uh, seal show mods at 7k, this puts your um, some of your rookies at uh, 2k and stuff, so this like, like lets you trade with new breakpoints. This lets you live over um, some other Digimon even. It's really, really strong. You can absolutely in his place run the new um, Izzy and Joe introduced this turn though. This one here, Izzy, Joe, and Izzy, Izumi, and Joe Kido. Cause this card is amazing too. Cause if you have two or more, if your opponent has two or more Digimon, gain two memory. And in this meta, it is very easy to go wide. So a lot of people will, and you will be getting tons of memory off that. And then when one of your black Digimon is deleted, you may also spend this Tamer to trigger draw one. So this goes back into what we were saying about Black Knight really having a lot of draw power. So if you want to replace Ty for this Izzy, that is definitely a viable call. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And until that next video, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory.